This is Hubbard Foundation, David Hubbard, neurologist, Arlene Hubbard, occupational therapist, just getting back from the MS Walk of Southern California, wearing their CCSVI Go With The Flow t-shirts for Hubbard Foundation. Hi, you guys. Thanks so much for talking with us today about CCSVI. We have a couple questions for you uh, regarding treatment, testing, quality of care. Let's start with quality of care. How do you know, David, if you're going to a good IR? The only way is with data collection. So we've been through quite a year. Uh, Devin was treated almost exactly a year ago. At that point, any IR anywhere was uh, what we needed. But now, since then, there have been all these things happening, uh, different claims about different size balloons, cutting balloons, uh, some amazing claims, some docs saying they've never had any restenoses. So the only way to settle these issues is if, if people are participating in uh, some kind of a registry. Like the Hubbard Foundation's multi-center registry with sites across the U.S. or the patient-centric registry. Um, HubbardFoundation.org can explain that. Um, Arlene, you talk to a lot of patients about uh, going to find a good IR. What, what are you saying to them also? What I say to them is First of all, they should have a list of questions before they go to meet with the IR. They should be able to get the answers that they need before they actually have the venous angioplasty. They need to know that it's ideal if the IR is near to them, should any problem arise after. They need to know what the IR's follow-up care is going to be. Um, and they should be willing to ask the IR if they're concerned about a specific vein being looked at. They should ask the R IR in advance, will you be looking at that vein? Because sometimes the IR might, might not look at a particular vein and you need to know that up front. Definitely. And regards to follow-up care, that's a big concern for people getting this treatment, especially if they're coming from different parts of the world. What do you guys suggest in regards to follow-up care? I'm also going to follow up with a question about restenosis. So, um, Dr. Hubbard, we'll start with you. So, the Hubbard Registry, we get the uh, quality of life data before and at 1, 6, and 12 months. So that will be uh, publishable data on these issues, uh, but there are more kind of practical day-to-day -day issues. How do you know whether it's restenosis or um, the more typical problems that uh, patients will have? The most common reason a patient has a downturn is actually urinary tract infection. Uh, so there's different possibilities than just uh, restenosis. Also, uh, the word relapse is used very loosely. A relapse technically means a new blood-brain barrier breakdown. That's a big deal. Uh, one needs to know that. In our experience, we've only had one uh, uh, relapse, true relapse, uh, with an MRI showing a new gadolinium lesion, uh, and that was about 10 days after they had restenosis. So we need to be able to uh, know which, which situation this is. Right, so you recommend one 6 and 12 month follow-up questionnaires as well as 6 and 12 month MR venography testing to check the flow to make sure that the veins haven't recollapsed to prevent this relapse. The MR and uh, V uh, flow at the same time, you can actually look for uh, whether there has been any uh, new lesions. Wow. And Arlene, what, what do you think about um, diet and supplements as a way to keep the body healthy? I think there are a couple of very important issues um, that, that need to be addressed with people that are going to be having the um, venous angioplasty. Um, and that is you, each person has responsibility for their own, own well-being. In addition to finding the right IR and having the right procedure done, we need to take care of our endothelium. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you're eating the right foods, you're bringing in lots of good nutrients, um, you're drinking lots of water, you're exercising, and you maintain um, uh, low stress levels through meditation, mindful meditation, yoga, whatever it is that works for you. Um, I think diet is absolutely essential. Um, I think that the, the research is there showing that certain kinds of diets um, work better than others. Um, for us, we recommend a gluten dairy-free diet. 
Um, Devin uh, was the first person uh, that we got treated in San Diego. Your son, Devin. It's my son, Devin, I'm sorry. And um, we, prior to the venous angioplasty, we had him on a gluten dairy free diet and a few supplements. And we used David's venous bowl test on him and saw that prior to the diet, he had terrible vena, cortical venous drainage. And after two months being on the diet, his um, uh, venous drainage improved by almost 50%. So we know that diet plays a big role in, in our own health care. Um, and we have to be proactive about that. Yeah, it sounds like it's important to do the research. I know that HubbardFoundation.org and the Hubbard Foundation blog talks a lot about diet and supplements. It's a great resource. Uh, also, it seems like you guys are saying it's important to have a, a good GP. You were saying something about urinary tract infection. Yeah, right now the neurology community is still uh, resisting this. Uh, but what's more important is to have a family doc, a GP, or an internist who can, who can uh, be interested in your care. Yes, it's true that doctor is not one who's going to use uh, disease-modifying drugs, but uh, as Arlene's saying, uh, at this point, uh, probably even more important is having someone who is taking care of your overall general health. It sounds like the Hubbard Foundation's philosophy encompasses not only the uh, venous angioplasty and testing portion of this CCSVI theory, but also the more whole body approach, including stress management, diet and supplementation, exercise. How is Devin doing? Devin um, is, as of this Friday, is a year post venous angioplasty. His symptoms essentially resolved. Um, he's doing great. He actually runs uh, AFI, Applied uh, FMRI, our facility that does the testing. Um, he has been a wonderful advocate for people with MS. He speaks with them on the phone and encourages them to take care of themselves. Um, and he's doing, he's doing great. He feels better than ever, and he, he's a different person. He's better than he ever has been. Wow. And we test him every three months, and he's had no new lesions. Wow, and as a neurologist, that's just incredibly exciting news. Yeah. As a father as well, I'm sure. But having that role um, can look at it from both ways. Now some patients have asked, you know, they know that there are people all over Facebook and YouTube saying I've improved, I've improved. Can this procedure make someone worse? There have been very rare side effects. There are uh, two or three horrible uh, adverse events. Uh, out of uh, how many? Uh, out of uh, 12,000. The, the, around, around the world. 12,000, okay. Uh, so in our case, we have uh, had no side effects. Uh, uh, one person had a uh, femoral vein uh, thrombosis in the, where the needle was put into the thigh, which was a, a resolvable uh, problem. Uh, in our case, we have had uh, about 25 restenoses out of some 300. Over 300. Uh, patients tested and treated. Uh, we're getting, we're collecting that data right now, so we're going to be actually presenting the data uh, May 14th at our conference in San Diego. Can uh, patients come to this conference? Yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, so we'll have the exact numbers at that point. And just to, to add something uh, about the conference, uh, that not only can patients come to this conference, they're encouraged to, and they'll be able to ask questions, um, and we, if they want to get treated, um, we have openings the week before and after, so they can include that if they wanted to make a trip to beautiful San Diego, um, uh, uh, so that they can also experience coming to the conference and, and meeting all of the um, uh, doctors that will be presenting and the scientists that will be presenting.